So although last week's simulation was very useful and served a purpose, it does lack capabilities in a few areas. So firstly, it doesn't allow us to compare parameter sets with a range of edges. So it isn't very realistic in that sense. And also it can only run a single simulation at a time. So each time we regenerate the data here, it effectively runs a new optimization simulation. But because we can only run one at a time, this therefore makes it difficult to get reliable quantitative metrics from it. So if we want to take this study further, then we need to turn to code. So this is a simple console application that I've written. So let me talk you through this. So the first question we have to, to answer is how many optimization simulations do we want to run um, in a single, a single go? So I'm just going to keep this, this as one initially. We then have to choose how many different parameter combinations we want to compare in the simulation. So if you remember in Excel, we had just 30 combinations. Here we can choose what we want. So I'm going to stick with the default of 100 parameter combinations. And we can specify what we want the sample size to be. So let's keep this again at the default of 250 to start. The starting equity, well, we'll keep that at 10,000. The stop loss and take profit level. So if you remember, this is a system that always exits the trades either at a stop loss or a take profit, which is equidistant from the entry point of the trade. And so we'll keep that at 1% of the equity at any point in time. And then just so that we're making this more realistic and adding the element of charges in there for things like swap and commission and spread, then we'll, we'll allow 2% for, for charges. So this is where we choose what we want the maximum edge to be of the best parameter set. So let me just explain how the distribution of edges is allocated to, to each of the 100 parameter combinations. So if we specify 10% as being the, the edge of the, the best parameter set, we then do a distribution across the 100 parameter sets we've said we want to analyze. So in this case, each parameter set gets incremented by 0.2% until eventually we've got a range of edges from positive 10% down to negative 10%. So the first parameter set in the simulation will have a value of minus 10, the second one minus 9.8, and so on, all the way up to our best parameter set, which will exhibit a, an edge of 10%. So clearly this is the one that ideally we would like to be able to select from our optimization, because that's the one, if that is a genuine 10% edge, that would serve us best as we traded this system in the future in our live account. So we're going to accept the default here of 10% so that we get the distribution that I just showed you. So let's take a look at the results. So based on the sample size of 250, we then rank each of those parameter sets as to where they actually came from first place down to 100th place. And here you can see that the best parameter set only managed to rank, in this particular case, in 38th position. Okay. The other thing that we're interested in is knowing, well, what was the percentage edge of the parameter set that actually won in this simulation? And in this case, it was 5.8%. So if you think about what that means, it means that if we run this sim if we run an optimization like this, we would be choosing 
the parameter set that achieved or achieves a 5.8% edge, which isn't great if you think about it. It's only just over 50% of the full potential of the system if we were able to choose a better or the best parameter set. Okay. Ignore these mean results here because we're only running one simulation at the moment. We'll look at those in a moment when we start to run many more simulations simultaneously. But for now, let's just run this single sim uh, simulation again using the same parameters. And because it's random in nature, it will give us different results. So this time, the best parameter ranked 33 out of 100. And we were a bit better on the the winning parameter set, which in this case had an 8.8% edge. And so we can keep running single simulations and see that here we did better now. So the, or the best parameter set came 16th, which is better. But if you look at this, the winning, the winning parameter set had just a 2.6% edge. So only 26% of the full potential of the system. Okay. So let's now, to get some more average metrics from this, we'll do the same, but we'll run a thousand simulations and then we'll get the mean values across all thousand simulations. Okay. So <clears throat> 1000 and we'll keep everything else as we did before as the default values. <clears throat> so just as a reminder, each of these lines represents a full optimization using the metrics we've provided. And you can see the position in which the best parameter set that that with the 10% edge was ranked. There's one here, incidentally, that's worthy of note because it did actually come first in this particular optimization. And so obviously, you know, the winning parameter set had the 10% edge, as you can see here. But usually that isn't the case. So if we now look at the average results we've got here, we can see that the average ranking of the parameters with the best edge is 17 out of, a, out of 100 uh, sets of parameters. And if we look at what the edge was of the best performing uh, parameter values in each optimization, we can see it's 7.47%. So effectively, on average, it means we can get 74% of the value out of the system if we have a sample size of just 250 trades on average, which is okay, but it's not great, okay? We're only getting 75% of the potential of our system. So what I've started to do is to plot these values so that we can start to look at the, the power analysis for for these particular metrics. Now, <clears throat> it's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to plot the metrics for an optimization than it is for a simple study, let's say, where you're comparing two products or two drugs. It's fairly simple to, to get that information into this form. But when you've got a, a hundred optimizations that you're trying to compare, it's not quite as simple. So let me show you what I've, what I've done here. So the example we looked at a moment, a moment ago, which was this one here, where we looked at 250 trades with an edge of 10%. And these were the values we got. So if we look at our 10% edge, which is this row here, and we've got the sample size across the top. So we're effectively looking at these three values. 
So as you can see from the analysis I did beforehand, I also got this ranking in position 17. So 17.9 in this particular case, whereas when we just ran it, it was 17.38. So that's very close. And the potential that you're getting from the system was 75.7% compared to 74.6% here. So you can see that by, by averaging this out over 1,000 simulations gives us quite a lot of reliability and the results are fairly constant that are coming out of the, out of the, out of the model. Now, I've done this for sample sizes of 500, 1,000, 2,500, 5,000 and 10,000. OK, so if we just run this once more with, again, 1000 simulations, but this time using 1000 trades as the sample size, everything else will keep the same. This will take a little bit longer to run because it's got more trades to process. <clears throat> we can see a fairly significant improvement in the results now. So that, that set of parameters that had a 10% edge are now ranking 9.9. .9. And in terms of the, the edge of the best performing parameter on average, it's 8.58, okay? So that means we're getting 85% now of the, of the potential of this trading system out of the optimization through the extraction of, of better parameter values. And so if we come back here, we can see that's represented here fairly similarly, 9.5 and 86, okay. So this chart here shows what the curve is for the 10% edge when we're plotting this percentage of the value that we can actually extract from the trading system for different for different um, sample sizes. So what does this tell us? Well, if we use the same basis that the majority of statistical studies do, and we look for a 0.9 or a 90% um, level of, of significance here, and if we want to achieve that level, then as you can see, we would need two and a half thousand trades on average from each parameter set in our optimization. So that's a fairly significant number of trades. What it also means is that <clears throat> if, for example, you perform an optimization, and on average it only has 50 trades, you can therefore see that you're only extracting approximately 50% of the performance on average from your system. So those parameter values that you're selecting based on those 50 trades and then trading in a live account, on average, it will be performing half as well, half as effectively, as it would if you were using a much higher sample size to get closer to those high edge values from the parameter values. So when I performed this analysis, I did it for a 2%, 5%, 10 and 20% edge across all of the sample sizes. And so how that manifests itself on the power analysis is that the 20% uh, the, the edge is the yellow line at the top and the 2% edge is the blue line at the bottom. So there's a fairly significant difference here. And as you can see, if your system does have a weaker edge, it's much more difficult to get high values for the same, uh, same sample size. And your sample size needs to be much bigger if you're going to drive the, the value out of that system. 
whereas for a 20 percentage it really becomes a lot simpler so you can now get your 90 percent level with probably as few as 500 trades what i've also done is just through interest really is plot the rank that the best parameter set achieves for different sample sizes and so you can see we've got a reverse scale here so as the sample size increases the rank decreases with one being the first position um, and 100 being the worst the last position so the important thing to note from here is that it's exceptionally difficult to get the best parameter set out of an optimization even with the 20 percent system and with a sample size of 10,000, the average is still rank position two. So really, you need to dispel the myth that you are able to extract the best parameters from your optimizations. Unfortunately, that just isn't going to, to happen. And you have to accept that instead of trying to get that best parameter set from your your optimization what you should be doing is increasing the sample size wherever you can in order to get a better percentage of that maximum potential 